Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. And yeah, the combine is out again. Um, last time I did a video, we were busy doing the barley harvest and expecting rain. Well, my goodness, the rain came and uh, we had a week, we've had a week of about 20 mil of rain, so almost every day, but we have the sun shining today and uh, all sorts of activity going on, on the farm. I've just been out in this, um, just had to collect some parts from um, Cotswold Farm Machinery. I just got here and it's always a good excuse to get a toy out the shed. We did spot a problem on the combine just when we put it away. So the parts I got were this um, bar here and this finger. So when we took the header off the combine, it just exposed this and there's a crack in it there, which is a bit odd, but at some point that's gonna break. You see it's already had a weld on that bar. So I've picked up another bar, however it goes. Yeah, it goes in like that. So it's a fairly easy job just to change that. So a little job to be done. And then that's a finger that goes on the auger and yeah, brings a straw in. No point, but I just wanted some spare ones. But yeah, during that we've had a sort of week standing still. There is all the barley, that's all nicely cooled. I've had the fans going on that. Um, but no lorries. Um, all farmers are finding this that uh, uh, the pandemic and various things and Brexit and lots of uh, HGV drivers leaving the UK, going back to Europe, has led us to a shortage of lorries in the UK. So trying to get yeah barley moved or produce off the farm is tricky at the moment. But the good news is I'm told it's going to start moving at the end of the week. But I had hoped it had gone. So the trouble with this farm, as you can see, there's, there's where you put the, the wheat, uh, sorry, the barley. I want the wheat to go there in a couple of weeks, but that's all got to go first. So go on. Um, and also if we start combining rape, obviously rape, where's that going to go? I think I'm going to make a pile over there or something. The other thing happening today is um, yesterday I scratched up all the fields that were in going into barley. We'll go up and have a look in a moment because those fields we're actually going to put the oil seed rape in. We're actually going to drill it today. And yeah, today is, I think it's the 2nd of August. Um, last year it was the 28th of August we put the oil seed rape in. And we're going early because of this cabbage stem flea beetle. We're trying to get it so away early in sort of temperature, where soil temperature is high, moisture. There's rain forecast on Thursday, today's Tuesday. And we, this is a little bit of an experiment to get around this cabbage stem flea beetle. If we can get the plants that established and that big, then the cabbage stem flea beetle can't really damage the plant because it's it's bigger and uh, healthier that's the theory so what i'm going to do now got all this seed load it up and then we'll go up the field and meet john who's about to put the odyssey rape in and we have to set up the drill and i'll explain what's going on up there it's always a game putting obviously rape in especially this hybrid variety of obviously rape because you do it you're trying to um, establish 30 plants per square meter and it's really expensive seed. This this bag, 240 pounds, sir. Um, and it's got one and a half million seeds in it, they claim. They don't count them out, I can't believe they do, but it's 7.9 kilos, one and a half million seeds. So we think that's in, I'm trying to work out what the seed rate is. It's a tiny, tiny seed rate. That's enough for um, three hectares. Oh, yep. Got another bidder coming in. Um, and this will do uh, three hectares, which is seven and a half acres or thereabouts. That little bag. Um, this machine um, needs the seed rate dressing up to put this sprinkling of seed in. And the real danger is that these bags, this little, there's eight of these bags, that's 2,000 pounds worth of seed. And you don't want to get the seed wrong. Um, so you put one or two bags in, work out the seed rate, see if it's going at the right rate, and then you put the rest in, rather than putting it all in and then it all running out before you've got to the end of the field. So anyway, we'll do some math. If you look on here, it's saying, right, there we are, you aim to establish 30 plants per square meter in the spring. And then you choose your rate. So we should have a good um, seed bed because it's warm, there's rain coming, we're early, this is ridiculously early in the season to be drilling. So we would hope 
we get low losses. So overall establishment loss is low, 0 to 20%. So we're gonna put in about 50, target seed rate of 50. We've got a bag weight, 7.9, so let's call it eight. So we want a um, seed rate of 2.67 kilos per hectare. And this magic machine with John driving it will do it perfectly, I am sure. But that's what we're gonna spend the next five minutes doing. Now I was out here last night with the stubble rake. So we combined this, finished it um, battle just over a week ago. And because we're putting the Odyssey rake in quickly, we just want to stir it up. We just, I went through with this straw rake. It just loosens it up. Top surface. There's an initial mix. I'll show you the drill in the moment. But it just gets the soil moving and helps um, any clumps of straw that the baler might have missed or something like that come out the back. Way. Just moves it about so then this machine can go through quite easily without getting blocked up. Um, I noticed we've had enough rain to actually make some of the barley that didn't end up in the combine came out the back in losses or whatever um, just grain some roots which is great news from my point of view because it means now I've stirred it up it would have died what we've got also wasn't quite wet enough to get these heads that dropped off remember that barley it had brackled it was right down we couldn't pick it up on the header of the combine so those unfortunately will grow um, but also the rate will grow and we've got a spray that can take out volunteers in the obviously rape it's an expensive residual you put on after all the barley's growing up but the main thing is to get the old seed rape in in perfect conditions and i'm also quite proud sorry if it's just got a bit windy but when i was doing this field i can sort of see a bit like stripes on your lawn so i've got a sort of lighter shade here and then darker there and i've got a new um, system on the tractor for this season that is satellite guided so there's a dome on top um, GPS if you like and it means I don't have to steer it anymore I just have to um, go around the boundary of the field and once I've done that I do one line at the angle of attack because I actually straw rate across the tram lines across the direction of drilling to get a better mix and once you put that in you just turn in um, and press auto and the tractor takes over but this is the first field I've done and it means you can actually take the machine right to the edge. You're so accurate. You're with, this machine will um, guide you across the field, plus or minus four centimetres or something like that. Um, hands free and it just ups the work rate because it's so accurate. When you've got a big wide machine and you're not quite sure where the last pass was, well, this is how you do it. Anyway, I'll roll it now so you can understand how it all, how it all works. Right, well, we're in the field now with this system trying to mark out a field. I've gone round the outside of the field and I now have a nice map on the control system on here on the tractor. The idea now is I want to do a straight line across the field and then I'm going to work off that straight line and the satellite is going to do everything and I won't have to touch the wheel and it will be locked on and it's very precise and it's all terrific. The trouble is this is driven by a human who has to press the right button at the right time and I'm all very new to this but so I've recorded the boundary done that I've now got to enter mark enter mark A so enter there we are I've done that that's very exciting I'm now I've got to pick something out and aim at a telegraph pole over there rather than that van driving down the road which wouldn't be good so my job now is just to drive a straight line to that pole. So I put the implement down, select a gear, give it some rates, I'm in third. Is that alright? Everything's good? Yeah, I think everything's good. Right. This is where the human, I'm not I'm having to steer this. But it should be the final time I have to steer it. I'm on along with this uh, strong rig. That's when it all goes crooked. I'm just going to stare at a telegraph pole. I've got a little sight mark on the front of the tractor, and I'm just driving in a straight line until I get to the other end of the field. Not very interesting, no. Why is that? I want to look behind. I'm not going to look behind, otherwise I'll go wrong. 
start bleeding in a minute because it's uh, kind of approaching the wall. There we go. Oh, lift it up, lift it up, there we are. Right, I now mark B. Mark B. There we are. I now have a straight line. Let's just see. So I'm now going to turn around this way. And now I've got lots of lines on the screen. And all I want to do, is still getting upset because I'm close to the wall, I'm going to turn in like that. This first one will be a just slow shape. But I'm now live on a red line to go back across the field. So I'm going to press auto, engaged. I take my hands off, I imp put the implement down, it's going to lock on to that line. It might go a bit nuts because it's a new field. There we are. They're slightly nuts. That's it! Oh, magic! Magic, don't have to touch a thing. It's locked on and it's within... Yeah, two centimetres. So it's two centimetres accurate. It's say at about 0 0.1, 1 0.9, 4 centimetres. How does it do that as a satellite thing on the top? I don't have to do any more. Welcome to the new world of tractor driving in 2021. Well, this, this tech's actually been in there quite a while now, but uh, it's the first time, first season I've had on with this tech. You have to buy a satellite receiver to go on the screen, and it's about £8,000. But once you've got it, you can do this. You can, an idiot can drive the tractor away. It takes a little bit of setting up. This tractor has never been in this field before. So right, that's me. I do a bit of that. And as soon as I touch the wheel, it disengages. It gets all a bit upset because we're going there. I don't know where to set the field. I'm doing this a bit slow for effect because I'm talking to you and I'm not really concentrating. There it is. It's got a little steer. There it is. And we locked on. So now I've left a mark there. I can see a mark there. And that is how you operate a tractor and how you get the dead straight lines that you used to have such a skilled tractor driver doing because it goes bendy and bendy as you go across the field. You can normally get the first one right, but after that, no chance. But with this system, guidance, that's how you do it. So there you go, that's how it all works. It's, it's going to be great as the season goes on because it just speeds operations up and it minimises again um, the number of times you go across the field. Unfortunately, we've got a plane flying over at the moment. Hope you can hear me. The other thing is just to show you the moisture in here, that 20 mil of rain, if I pull that up, that's still very damp. So that's enough to germinate the seed and that's what we're trying to do. As soon as John has finished drilling this field, I'll be out here rolling it and seal it up and for once in right in the middle of the combine season hoping for rain on Thursday that will be just enough and all the oil rate will come up. The other rush today, whenever you just sort of see this wheeling here, this is where all the bales were and 230 odd bales we ended up with. They went, most of the majority went this morning so the last load went Oh, it was about two hours ago, so it was really tight timing with the tractor coming in to, to drill it. The, the barley straw, um, it was a Welsh contractor, um, lorry driver, who was taking it to, he said, to a farm about 10 miles west of Cardiff. Uh, he got 65 bales on board, I think it was, at 340 kilos um, a bale. It's about 22, 23 tonnes, I think it is, of bales on it. Uh, he had a wonderful technique of just chucking the straps over the top, strapping it all down, and just they used the machine just to nudge it up to tighten the bales on the load, keep it as dense as possible. What they're fighting is 16 and a half foot, I think, height for low bridges, etc. I mean, all lorries are, you know, have to watch low bridges. So he's, that's what he was fighting. Anyway, hope this wind isn't getting the mic too much, um, but I think John is just starting the calibration. So let's go and have a look how you do calibrate a drill like this. A little this. bit on this spent tractor, absolute monster of a tractor. Even the front weight, what's that? There's two and a half kilos of steel just hanging off the front there. Um, weight of this tractor is around 14 tons, we think. Big tyres, 38, and with very grip, very grip. So you can actually adjust the um, pressure of the tyres on the move 
to whatever field operation you're going as well. It's all got hands free in it as you can hear something going on in the background, John just dashing up. Huge tyre. Bigger than me, these tyres, so well over six foot um, diameter. More weight, this is all about um, getting grip where you've, where the wheels are, it's a good place to have the weight to get the grip. Um, 600 kilos of uh, weight in the middle of the tyre there. Uh, no light weightness of this because you need the, it's the grip that sorry the weight gives you the grip the traction etc you don't want a lightweight um, tractor with this sort of horsepower because it will just spin away it wouldn't actually bite into the ground then great big Claydon hybrid drill what I love is this top link if you're into tractors normally you adjust that um, with a screw thread everything's so monster on this it's actually hydraulic you just press a button and that top link which is that thing that attaches it there uh, moves in and out so no screw thread adjustment on a, on a tractor like this then we get to the workings of this machine so this front bar there's these fixed ties which is this one which is hydraulic control this goes deeper than the seed is going so this this is like a cultivator um, just breaks the soil the idea being it, it breaks the soil just where the seed is going and this hoe here is actually dropping the seeds and that's higher up than these legs here so you see here that leg is right in the ground and the hoe behind it is higher that would be just in the surface. If I see rape, it's almost just below the surface because it's a tiny seed, so you don't want too much seed depth on it. The seed will come barren down here as a blower on it, hydraulic powered air blower, and that blows the seed down here to the coulter, and then it splits. So it's probably easier to see on this one. So the seed charges down here and comes out in two rows where this just behind this hose, so in a loose, friable soil that's already been loosened by this fixed tine here and then this spring tine just puts its shadow in this sort of friable soil this um, which is what you want for drilling you don't want to smear it you want to go in a sort of tiny particles of soil etc depth is sort of controlled by this wheel that tells you what depth you're working to this just a leveling board just after all this operation as you're charging across the field this just levels the ground gets rid of any sort of humps where the cultivators have sort of made it slightly uneven soil and in the final bit um, a follow, following harrow like this just smooths it out and then that's it that's the drill that's how you put um, the old seed rape in. the key job is just getting it accurate enough so John's just working out um, the computer says you you um you're trying to work out the seed rate you dial it in you then open the thing you press it and the the motor turns and then you weigh how much you've got in your bowl and see if it matches what you're meant to have in the bowl according to what you got on screen and then sort of adjust it either side of that to get it absolutely spot on the seed rate that's that's what's going on here there you go it's all calibrated now so there's the seed and it's like this blue little ball bearings it looks like or shot i suppose you could call it and the variety is called excited strange names they come up with obviously that machine is completely satellite guided as well he will be um, letting go of the steering wheel as soon as he turns into the work and then satellites will um, take it across the field. He's got an even more accurate system on that but it is about two centimetre accuracy uh, across the field like this. Incredibly accurate, the modern systems. But you have to pay a subscription um, to get that amount of accuracy. I don't need it for what I'm doing but on a tractor like this and doing the amount of drilling he needs that pinpoint accuracy. So he does that. I think the only other thing I didn't show you are just the markers at the back that put in the um, pre-emergence mark so you, I know where the tram line is going to be that where we drive up and down on this road so he's literally just having a little go here um, and we'll just see what sort of depth it's at etc yeah, just before we get drilling this is the uh, where the lorries so the straw lorries were going up and down so it's quite compacted I mean I have cultivated this but John's just going to run up with this machine just open it up so he's not going to be putting seed in this is just to even up the soil just and it will also be another test of what depth we're actually drilling at so he's just going in now and there's easy feet so that bit 
fixed tyre and then the colts are just behind it. There they are. You see where those, that lorry was? It's completely disappeared now. But yeah, it's a fair bit of moisture there, a fair bit of movement with the soil. And now I, that you can see why I need to come in and roll this, because it's very light and it will just lose all its moisture. So I will seal it off um, by coming over here with the rolls. It might be tonight, it might be tomorrow. Depends how we get on with the combine. So I'm going to leave John to it and uh, let's go back to the farm, sort the combine out. I think I've explained before that on the farm we have these sort of wildlife refuge areas part of the countryside stewardship. This is the pollen and nectar mix here and this is about four or five acres of borage and uh, the bees, it's just humming in here uh, with the amount of bee activity right across here. I don't know if you can see the flowers, here they are, honey bees. We actually have some hives, a um, friend in, uh, in the village just here has the hives just the other side of this and I suspect these are all, she has six hives just down here and I expect they're very busy today all in here. So nice, just coming into flower, these very distinctive sort of blue flowers here. Um, you might know it from your pims and things like that. Apparently you can use it for all sorts of things. We don't actually use it, but perhaps we should. <laughs> We've got plenty of it. Anyway, we're meant to be going up to look, see the combine, but I thought you might just quite like to see this field of borage first. Well, this is the oilseed rape, and the last time we looked at it, it was sort of green, and we were thinking about um, spraying it off with um, Roundup. And we've done that now, and it's been about 10 days, oh, I think it's almost two weeks, actually. And it's completely senesced, as have the weeds. This is actually a good bit of oilseed rape, but that was sort of green, and that's not green anymore, and that will go through the combine. So the um, Roundup has done a really good job. Now I need to see just how dry it is and whether it's actually, we can combine it. And it's tricky getting a sample of oilseed rape. Um, because the seeds just want to escape from their pods before you get them in the bag. And uh, so I'm going to do my best impression of a combine harvester and nab some pods, put them in this bag, and we'll see what sort of moisture it is. It's like peas in a pod, really. Little black seeds. I don't know if I can get this so you can see. Try this with a little crunch up. There we go. There are little tiny seeds just popping out. So anyway, I want to get a load of those. And it just takes a little longer. It's probably, yeah, I don't think it's one of those crops you get around a ton per acre. When you think wheat, we're aiming at four tons per acre, so it just takes a little bit longer to get enough of a sample to find out the moisture. Now this is the tricky bit, I'm trying to get rid of the pods. I take them out the top of the bag. Give it a good old rattle, so I can leave the seed in the bag and take these empty pods out, is, is the theory. That's about enough, let's see where we've got here. There we are, there's my, there's my effort. Now I've got to just get rid of some more of these. There we are, the combine's a lot better at that than I am. Oaks, right. Oh, I've just got to get this to say, triticale, corn, sunflower, rapeseed, 11 mil, damn you. That needs more of the sample. Let's have a look. It's probably fairly representative because there's bound to be a bit of rubbish in the sample. Right, 11 mil. Oh, what's, going, what's going in there? Rush. Is that a rape? That's a rape. Right. Bung that in there and grind it up. Now I have no idea what the moisture of this is going to be. That doesn't feel uber dry actually. There's no sort of crunchy that feels a bit wet. We want that the answer we want on there is nine uh, percent moisture. I suspect it's about 14 15. Let's see if I'm right. There's the countdown three, two. One. Ah, 12.6. So, yeah, not quite dry enough, but that will come down very quickly. It's such a tiny seed, and we just have a little bit more sun on it. It's uh, half past three now. I would say that's probably going to be dry around five, six o'clock tonight. So, we'll have a go then. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the combine ready, just do the last bit of servicing, and um, that's it for this Harry's Farm video. But I'll do another one um, probably tomorrow when we start on the oilseed rape and we finish off the drilling of, of the rape up at the other farm. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Quick snapshot of what's going on on Harry's Farm. If you have, we'll keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.